welcome to Asbury's Echoes. This is um, I, our floss tube channel where we also share other things that we do, but it's mostly cross stitch. I'm Rhonda, this is Drew, and Drew does all of my filming, my editing, and he sits here beside me and keeps me company while we film. It's a um, beautiful day here in Southern Iowa. It's, I don't know, I haven't looked, 70 some degrees. 75, I think. 75 it's supposed to be, and then tonight it's supposed to go get really cold, get down to like, I don't know, 12 or something like seriously? that. Yeah, seriously, it's gonna be, but then it's supposed to start getting better again, and we really can't complain. It is February, and usually it is cold, so. Been miserable. Been miserable. It's, it's been, been really miserable. nice, but I'm sure winter is not over. We'll be getting a lot more winter before we're through. Probably. I'm sure. We have taken advantage of this weather. We've gotten together with our homeschool friends a couple times last Thursday and yesterday and we were outside the whole time and the kids just had a ball. They walked trails and played in the lake and it's been nice. And I have been busy, um, well, my husband is building me a farm stand. So while this weather is nice, we've been outside a lot more than I've been inside. So I haven't gotten a lot of stitching done, but I have gotten some. And I'm trying to figure out what that is that's on here, okay. So let's see, somebody had asked me, more than one person has asked me how I dye my projects. And I do not have a recipe. I just dump whatever looks good, stir it up and hope for the best. And then I either slather it on with a paintbrush or I dip, dip my project in, but we're going to stop here and okay so here's how i dye my um my pillows my stitches and first i make the dye and i apologize because i have i do not use a recipe i just am one that just kind of dumps and adds and eyeballs it and calls it good so i have a jar full of well it's not completely full but i've got a jar of hot water but it's just water straight from the tap so it doesn't have to be extremely hot. Then I yeah, I also have instant coffee. This happens to be decaf, it doesn't matter, just whatever instant coffee. And then I use also walnut crystals, and I have two here. This is walnut crystals, I'm not sure. I do not know where this came from. I'm guessing Amazon, I have had it for years, I have used the same little bottle for forever and ever and ever, or jar, because it, it just doesn't take a whole lot. Or I also have this one, and this one came from Cinnamon Creek Folk Art. And I've been trying, I wanted to use this one up before I use this one, but I really wanna try this one too, so. And this one says one tiny wooden spoonful to one cup of hot water for small projects. And it did come with a little wooden spoon. I didn't think to bring the wooden spoon out here. And it looks, it looks a little different. It's more fine. I don't know if you can see that. It's very, very fine. Where this one is not. This one reminds me more of um, instant coffee type. So those are the two things that I dump in the water together. And how much do I use? Sorry about that. I don't know. I just kind of pour some in till it looks good. And then I add a little bit of this. Oh, it looks good. Drew says it smells good. He's smelling the coffee. Then I stir it up. Stir, stir, stir. Sometimes if I don't, if I'm going to use it right away and I don't get it completely stirred up, those coffee crystals, they will um, look pretty cool on your piece because 
they'll have little darker areas from those coffee crystals. But this time I'm gonna try and, oh, I'm sorry, that noise might be annoying. Okay, that's it, that's all I do. There's no rhyme or reason to what I do or to how, the, how it looks. And then I will use it and decide if I think it's dark enough. If it's not, I might add a little bit more of one or the other. If it's um, too dark, you can always add water to tone it down a tad. I honestly, I never know what I'm gonna get. So after I have that part done, I then take my piece. I have two different ways to do this and there's no rhyme or reason. I grab a piece of newspaper. If I have a piece like this that hasn't been sewn into anything, I will take paintbrush and dip it into my dye and just slather it on. Just like that. And get all as, make sure you get as much of the material as you know you're going to be um, seeing with your finished project product. I pretty much saturate it and it does not take long for it to dry. Sometimes if the weather is nice in the summer, I'll set it outside in the sun. And this is one way too, if I have a piece of this fabric and I wanna dye it before I stitch on it, sometimes I'll do it this way. And I'll show you here in just a minute. And there's no, no rhyme or reason. You just make sure you get everything dyed that you want to be dyed. Okay, so, and this is the Nate Berkus fabric that I use from um, Joann's. So I pretty much know how it's going to take the dye. See, it doesn't come through on the back for the most part. It, it, it dyes the front and not the back, and so it doesn't dye as dark sometimes. Okay, so there's that one. And like I said, sometimes if I have just a plain piece of fabric that I haven't stitched on yet that I want dyed before I stitch, I will do it this way. Or, then I have this one. This one I've made into a pillow and it really isn't gonna matter so much because the back of this fat, this fabric isn't really gonna show whether it's been dyed or not. But if you use something that you want the whole thing to look like it's been dyed and you want the back of the, fab, the fabric on the back to um, be toned down and look more primitive. Now this is really simple. I just dunk it in. Make sure the whole thing gets good and wet. And then I squeeze it out. That's all there is to it. And sometimes with my fabric, if it's just a plain piece, I will dunk the whole thing like that rather than use the paintbrush and do just the top. Okay, and there you go. I just try and smooth it out as best I can. It usually doesn't wrinkle too much. And there you have it. That is um, how my dyeing process goes. There's nothing too, too rigorous about it. You just, I just dump things into the water and stir it up and that's what I do. Sometimes, like I said, it will be darker. Sometimes it will be lighter. If it's too dark, you add water and tone it down a tad, but that's how I do my dyeing process. Okay, we are back. And again, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Um, I forgot to mention, I we did not film last week. It was a very busy week. The weather was beautiful. We were outside a lot. But we also did a live stream. Doreen with Privies and Prims invited us to do a live stream with her. And I think that was on Wednesday? 
I don't even remember, Tuesday or Wednesday, and it was a lot of fun, really enjoyed it. Um, so if you haven't seen that one and you want to, go to Doreen with Privies and Prims, her floss tube, and you can see us chat about all things cross stitch. And Doreen had a friend join us too, and she had some questions about a project she's wanting to get started on Etsy, so um, hop on over and check that out. It was, it was really fun, very, very nerve wracking, but it was fun. So the few things that I have done today or done in the past week, I did this one and it's called Prim Stitchin. And most of my word pillows, I've been doing these word pillows because people have been, seem to really enjoy them and they've given me all kinds of suggestions of ones they'd like to see. This is one that somebody had suggested. And instead of doing it all in just a plain brown, like I had been doing. I tried doing this one in blues and it's got some brown in it too, I think. Let me look. I'm not sure. I think it's blues and browns. It is blues and browns. And it's been dyed and it was dyed pretty dark compared to some of the things that I've got here. But this was done on the Nate Burkus fabric from Joann's. One over two. All of my stuff is one over two. And then I dyed this after stitching. So there's that one. And I have put that one in my um, Etsy shop. And let's see, another one. This one was, I really like the way this one turned out. I thought this one was really fun. Spring Blessings. It's got a bluebird and some tulips and a little, little butterfly. And looks like Drew's opening the windows up. It's stuffy in here. It's so nice outside today. So this again, done on um, the Nate Burkus fabric. And this is um, chenille trim from Purple Paper Mountain. And I was going to double check, but I'm pretty sure she said she was going to put these, put this trim, the chenille trim that we've been using that a lot of us are really enjoying using on our prim, um, prim stitches here. She's on Etsy and she said, if you search Prim Chenille, that the ones that we've been using um, will pop up so that you can hopefully, well, hopefully you can use, or you can find the ones that, um, like if you're looking for this specific blue that I've used, I can never remember the names of them, the colors, but I am going to start writing them down so that I can say what they are. But then if you're interested, she is, um, she has such pretty, pretty trims and they are very reasonably priced and she's a very fast shipper and I can't say enough good about um, Purple Paper Mountain. That was Spring Blessings and that one is also in the Etsy shop. And then this, these I just put in today and I need to find a bigger wooden bowl because this one's not quite big enough. But these are, there's three of them and I'm selling them as a, as a set of, of the patterns. You can get three patterns for $8 versus the other ones are $5. So these are thankful, grateful, thankful, grateful, and blessed. And I just thought that they would look so nice. Um, if you had three of them, you could keep them in a bowl. You can set them on a shelf. I had them up here on my shelf. Um, I think there's a picture of them on Instagram somewhere floating around or, or my Facebook page. I'm not sure of the three on my shelf. Um, you could put them in a basket. You could put them with other things, but I just thought they turned out really, really cute. And again, the Nate Burkus fabric, one over two and it's 3021 is the number of the brown that I've been using for all of them, except for this blue one, the prim stitch in one. I did pull out my punch needle. My husband doesn't like my punch needle. Hmm? He doesn't like the sound that it makes. I tried it a while back. Well, it's been a couple, three years. It's been a little while since I've tried it. And I was really enjoying it. I'm not very good at it yet because I haven't had a chance to really um, do much because again, I do it in the evenings when we're watching TV and I was getting the, um, 
the evil eye the other night when I was <clears throat> punching. So <laughs> yeah, he, he just doesn't like the sound and I get it. It is kind of a, I find it soothing as I'm doing it, but I, I can imagine if you're sitting there listening to it, it's probably a little bit annoying. So I'm going to try and do my punch needle at different times. But this is what I did. I did this little, this little bumblebee. And darn, Teresa's Prim Treasures. I'm pretty sure it's Teresa's Prim Treasures is where I got the, um, the pattern. The candle is from Amazon. I ordered it off of Amazon and it's a, a cheerful giver candle. And I actually turned this into a pin. The back has a little a pin. So I just put the twine around the candle, added the little pin, and I just thought that was really cute. These would make a really cute gift for somebody in the candle. So that was that was my punch needle. I did start another one yesterday when we were at um, out at Belvedere with the homeschool group. And it's going to be I don't remember what it was called. It's a willow tree and it was um, a Lori Brecklin pattern. So I will hopefully be able to finish that and have that to show next time. Let's see if I can find time when Joe's not around to finish my punch needle projects. And that's it for my cross stitch. I do have some things in the works, but nothing really to show. But I did want to show share this. I don't know if anybody else has jumped onto the bandwagon with this one, but um, a while back they were doing this and they were using little jewelry boxes, but then I ran across a video on YouTube the other day and she had used a bigger one and I really liked the box that she used. So this is just a jewelry box that comes from Amazon. It's not very big. This is another one, a smaller one. And I'm not going to do anything to the outside of it because I've seen where they have like to cover this up. They, somebody put a real pretty heart or other things, but I, I don't want to have to worry about the outside of it because this is going to be for travel. And then on the inside, it just, just snaps open and the inside, I might want to look at it first before I open it up and make sure nothing is, oh yeah, it still looks pretty good. <laughs> Sometimes I open it up and some of the stuff is moved around. I don't know if you can see it. So that is what I've done to the inside. Now these come, I should have taken a picture of the before, of the big one, but I didn't. But here's, so here's what the small one looks like. So the big one had, it had this too. And in the center, it had one of these that lifts up. And then you had this in here. And um, what you do is, you can keep this. Drew's going to do one too, but I think you're wanting to keep this, aren't you? You're wanting to keep yeah, the cover. It has, a it has a hinge. And I took the whole thing out on mine. And then you just, it's not hard. This stuff just comes right out. I mean, who went, okay. So the first one came right out. <laughs> this one doesn't want to come out. There we go. You just rip it out. Oh, that one's in there good. There. See? You just rip it out. Anyway, this one's stuck in there good. That one wasn't. So I'm going to have to do a little bit of scraping. But that comes right out. It's all glued in. And then this will come out. And did I take... No. Yeah, this this here will come out too. But it, it's that's what it looks like after you rip it apart. And then I simply took a piece of cardstock. Take all the pieces out. So I took a piece of cardstock and made a template for the inside and the bottom. And I covered it with fabric and I used Mod Podge to just glue it on. And then I took another piece of cardstock and measured around the inside. And I think it probably took two pieces and pieced them together. And then I covered them, wrapped them with the same color fabric 
And again, I Mod Podge those in. And then these dividers that came out of it, I covered them in fabric with Mod Podge and then you can put them anywhere you want. However you want to organize the inside of your, your box. And then I just, I haven't really decided yet what all I'm gonna keep in this one, but I thought it would be great to have one. I want one to keep in the camper so that when we go camping, I have everything I could possibly need in here and in the camper so I don't have to worry. I can grab a project bag if there's something missing from the project bag, as long as I make sure the project bag contains what the hoop and the fabric and the threads, then I know everything will be in here in my camper. And then you can just organize this however you want to organize it. This has needles. I think I got this from Brenda Gervais years ago. Huh? I'll put a travel case, so my iPod. And yeah, Drew's gonna make one, and he's going to um, keep his iPod and his his earphones and Chargers. chargers and all that kind of fun stuff in there. So that's that, and then I've got this. This is a little. Oh, I didn't know it came with that. It's got a magnet in it. I can keep some pins in there. And it says, so much to stitch, so little time. But there's a sheep on it. So if there's a sheep on it, I'm going to take it or like it and use it. Mm. Definitely. Got my trusty um, measuring tape. This has just got some little findings in it. It's just a little tin. This I made a long, long time ago. It's supposed to be a scissors fob. And this was a Lori Brecklin um, pattern. And I don't really use it as a scissors fob because it's a little too big and bulky and gets in the way. So I probably am going to take all that off of it, but use it as a little pin cushion. It's got a little girl on it. And right now I've got a needle stuck in there. So that's for that. I don't know where this was, it doesn't matter. And then I saw that somebody had done this. So I thought that was a really good idea. I just took another piece of cardstock, covered it with my paper or my fabric, mod podged it on there, and then the backs of these have the brand name right there. And just take one of these, stick it in there, and voila, covers up that um, brand name, and then it's it all coordinates with the rest of your your little box and then you just have fun just just do whatever you know you have you want to do this is just some charms that we've got I've got I think there's a tape measure and a sewing machine and a pair of scissors and just a little red charm there just hung that there these are just some old buttons for decoration oh and this was something else too um, I've seen some just take a piece of ribbon, a colorful coordinating ribbon, and glue it on right there. This is just, it just opens up. I use some lace. That's what it looks like before. And then I put some lace on there because I didn't really have a ribbon that I wanted to use. And then you can stick some needles in there if you need some needles. Um, perfect for your little scissors because they fit right in there. One thing I haven't done yet that I'm going to do is make a needle minder and I'm just, I've got some of the fabric, so I'm going to make a needle minder to keep in there so that then I have everything I think I could possibly need when we're camping. And Drew, like Drew said, he's going to make one travel case, a travel case. They do, um, they close nice and tight. Nothing's coming out of there. And this is very tight, this um, snap. So yeah, see, it's tight. It's there. There you go. So that was my fun project for the week. Don't always do those things, but here lately, I've really been in the mood to, to do um, fun things. And I took this with me yesterday. It doesn't 
quite hold like the um, when you're punching with the punch needle, the, the needle threader, but it will fit in here. So I do have another one coming and I'm just gonna take all the guts out and cover it and make it pretty. You're gonna get it. And I'm gonna use it for my punch needle and keep my, um, my needle and my needle minder. And actually the little balls of thread I never thought about that. They'll probably fit in there. Just, just nice, just perfect. And some scissors. And then if I'm gonna do my punch needle, I probably do another one for the camper for punch needle and one for my cross stitch. So that I think is all I have today. What have you got? I haven't really been busy since we've been <clears throat> gone, but now it's nicer outside. I have a little, um, farm with my tractors and stuff and I wanted a farm vehicle and I didn't want to be perfect because no farm vehicle is perfect they get beat to heck so I took this one of my older ones uh an explorer I put some clay on the sides of it to make it look like um rust <laughs> I put it on the back of it and then I ripped the headlight out of it and made it so the bumper isn't on right and then I, whoops, I made sure that I bent the door up so it's out of line. Um, and then I'll just put the, I suppose I'll just put the bumper. So here. I want rusty, crusty, old, vintage stuff. And I'm afraid that's rubbed off on you, only you want it with your cars. Mm -hmm. Is that I'd right? I have a rusty car than a perfect car. <laughs> <laughs> he wants the old rusty crusty cars and I want the old rusty crusty vintage they have character well used yes the things that have character and tell a story right mm -hmm. all right anything else no mm -hmm. well I think that's it today we didn't have a whole lot today um we've been busy and as summer comes I mean well spring comes it's gonna be a few months here, or a few months I hope not a few weeks yet but once it hits, we will spend more time outside than we will in. So um, maybe we'll even shoot some video outside. You think? Yeah, I'm ready to start the garden. I have um, this farm stand. We're going to put eggs in, try and get rid of some eggs. And maybe some garden seeds, some flower seeds, um, extra produce if we have any. Go to the antique store. Um, Drew wants to go to the antique store this Today. afternoon. We'll see about that. I need to get to the thrift store because my scarecrow, I can see her from um, the doorway here, the window, and she's <laughs> she's looking a little ratty, so we're going to have to get her some new clothes. And um, I guess that's what we'll be doing the rest of this week. Right. Maybe or maybe not about Miss Scarecrow. We'll see how that goes. But I want to thank everybody for watching. Um, wow. uh, we really appreciate it. Like and hit that subscribe button. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Turn on bell notifications so you get notified every time we upload. Turn on the notifications and um, comment. If you have questions, um, I try and go through and read all the comments and we really enjoy it. And I think that's it. So thank you, everybody, and have a cool. good week. Goodbye.